and there's a weight of head that's too heavy. You just can't get any acceleration because it's just, just too heavy given your strength, right? It's different for everyone. Um, there's a weight that's so light that it's not making the best of the power you have in your body, right? Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I'm doing a video on axes. And uh, the main point of the video is why I think this axe, two and a quarter pound head on a 28 inch handle, is the ideal axe to take with you if you're going deep into the woods and you want something you can rely on for a range of tasks that's not gonna let you down. Uh, so I'm gonna set this video up by discussing all the other axes I have and, uh, and why I, you know, their strengths and weaknesses. Um, so let's uh, get started, I guess. And let's start with the smaller ones. Um, these two are about the same length. They got a 20 inch handle. Um, so some people might call these hatchets. I guess you could call them that. Um, both of these came on short little 12 inch handles. Uh, the type of thing you would get, or maybe slightly longer, but really small uh, handle, right? Like the handle would have stopped around here. So they were just one handed axes. And uh, the first thing I did was remove that handle and put uh, a 20 inch handle on. At least then you can hold it with two hands. You just got so much more control and that sort of thing. So I solved that problem. But an axis, uh, this is a one and one quarter pound head. So is this one, okay? They both have the same, same weight head. Uh, this one I got for 12 bucks. Uh, just in like a, you know, a big bucket in a, a surplus store or something like that. And this one here I got in a, a hardware store and it was a Swedish axe, it actually had a crown on it, and they were getting rid of them, and it was like $25. This thing has always been an extraordinary axe, very good edge. It worked, it's the, of all the axes I've got here, this is the only one I've ever bought that worked great, right out of the box. Um, you know, I picked it up, took it home, as soon as I used it, it was sharp and it worked great. All these other ones required a amount of work, and these are all cheap axes. There's nothing here that costed any more than like $40, okay? So uh, I don't believe in spending money on axes. Uh, as I said in a previous video, uh, if you buy an axe, you know, you've, you've got basically an axe. <laughs> There's a, you know, some things you need to bear in mind uh, that will differentiate good, a good axe from a poor one. Certainly a lot of the uh, ornate things that uh, people seem to want to buy aren't very practical. Uh, this tr traditional style uh, is you know, there's, there's advantages to that other, rather than getting something that looks really cool that you saw in a movie that's probably utterly useless. Um, we'll talk more about that when I discuss the axe that I think is the ideal axe. It has all the qualities, the versatility uh, of a good axe. But anyway, these are great, um, but where they come short is their shortness. <laughs> now, and the lack of weight, right? So, I mean, it's got a short handle. We can remedy that by putting a longer handle on there, I suppose. Uh, but you've still got a relatively light head. You know, the amount of force that you can uh, apply to cutting a tree, force is mass times acceleration. So it's a question of how much mass there is, that's the weight of the head, and how much acceleration you can impart on that as you're swinging. The longer the handle is, the more acceleration you can add to it. And there, there's a weight of head that's too heavy. You just can't get any acceleration because it's just, just too heavy given your strength, right? It's different for everyone. Um, there's a weight that's so light that it's not making the best of the power you have in your body, right? Uh, an axe head like this, you could make that argument that it's not, the, for someone my size, I'm like a 200 something pound, six foot four man, um, uh, you know, I can swing a heavier axe. Um, so, you know, I can get a lot more of an axe if it has a slightly heavier head, okay? Uh, but this is a great axe for putting in a backpack and that sort of thing. But where this falls short is splitting and felling trees and splitting. Where it's great, it's its packability, it's la it doesn't weigh that much, and it's really great for the sort of up-close work when you're carving, right? You know, doing, putting a point on a piece of wood, or if you had to make a canoe paddle, or, you know, any sort of woodworking like that. You know, you know bush carpentry, you could call it, right? Uh, the working with green wood, that sort of fashioning things out of trees into shapes you want. It's really great for that because it's nimble and it doesn't weigh that much. It's not exhausting to hold in your hand. It's got that advantage. But... In a northern situation where you've got cold nights and you need a lot of firewood and that sort of thing, uh, I wouldn't want to have to, you know, fell trees uh, to make big fires using a little thing like this. You could do it, but I wouldn't want to have to do it. Also, 
with a handle length like this, uh, it's just not as um, safe in terms of uh, felling trees. You, you really want the handle to, you know, if you're holding it like this, you want it to go into your chest, right? That's the minimum length for a tree to be safe. And I'm going to do a video where I fell a tree using this ideal axe uh, and talk about that a little bit more. But let's just assume for now that you want to, you know, if you want to be absolutely safe felling a tree, you want to, you want to axe your holding with two hands and you want the handle to be as, so long that basically if, if the butt's against your chest and you're holding your hand out like this, you can just hang on to it. Okay, there might, people might have different arguments about that, but th at least that way it's, it's a height, it's a length relative to your height. And that affects when you're cutting the wood because when you're, when you're cutting down a tree, if you miss the tree or it glances off, it's gonna hit the ground and not your foot. If it's short, uh, there's problems. And yes, there's ways to cut down a tree um, with a shorter axe, you basically have to do it from taking a knee, right? And, and there's a technique for that. I'll discuss that in another video. But anyway, my point is that this is not the, tr the axe you want to have with you when you need to fell trees. And just given its lack of, of width, it's also not the axe you want to use for splitting wood. Not that you do, you know, like really when you're making fires in the bush, you really don't split wood. It's not really, you know, um, you know, if you're sawing logs in half, you're splitting them. But if you're just, if all you have is an ax, you're not going to be splitting a lot of wood. But there's instances or situations where you'd want to be able to split wood. This isn't an ideal tool for that, in my opinion. Uh, neither is this one. These are basically equivalent to one another. I'm just showing you that, you know, this $12 ax is just as useful and just as sharp as this one. Uh, but it didn't come like that. When I bought this $12 ax, it was useless. <laughs> useless. And it took about an hour or so, and now it's a great axe. Okay, so anyway, there's, there's a sort of 20 inch axe. This is the type of axe you see in most bushcrafting videos. They have these sort of shorter things with them. Uh, and they're handy for doing a lot of up close work in camp, but they're really not great for felling trees. All right, now let's go towards the other end of the spectrum. Ha ha, you've probably seen something like this in a movie. <laughs> right, something impressive like this. And I saw this at, um, I think it was Princess Auto. You know, it's it sort of like a, a Costco for dudes. <laughs> uh, or chicks that are into that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, it's got axes and you know tires and motor things. And it, it's like Canadian tire on steroids. It's another way of putting it. Um, anyway, uh, I saw this thing in there for like $20 and I bought it. And uh, you know, I took it home, took it to a tree. It wasn't sharp at all. You know, but, you know, I put a nice edge on this thing. Can I fell trees with this axe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? We got like a 36-inch handle here, right? And it's got a nice, extremely sort of steep edge. So it really, really good for cutting down trees, really good for limbing. And that's what an axe like this is for. It's, it's a, you know, a, a lumberjack's axe in a sense, a double-bitted axe. You put two edges on it. One with a, a very steep point for cutting wood. And another axe a little bit, uh, not quite as steep, something a, you know, a little more blunt like that for you know, things that are more of a smashing nature, but you still want a bit of an edge. Um, so it's really good for that. This is a great axe for felling trees. It's, it's really not much use for anything else. This is a tree felling axe. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to have to be carving things. It's got an edge on both sides, so it's dangerous. You know, an axe like this, it's an axe and it's a hammer. I got a cutting tool and a really good smashing tool. Really handy out in the woods. There's a lot of things you can do with a smashing, a reliable, strong, weighted smashing tool. It's a mallet. It's a hammer. It's a sledgehammer. It's a maul. It, it does all those things. I have no such tool on this. And it's unbelievably long and unbelievably wieldy, and it has two sharp edges. If I leave this embedded in a stump, it's got a, a razor's edge sitting up, waiting for someone to step on, right? It has to be leaned against a tree. And even then, even if you lean it against a tree, it's got an edge facing each way, right? This is just not, just not the tool you want to take miles back into the woods with you, especially if you're by yourself, because, you know, it's, it's heavy. It's, you know, not ideally suited to strapping onto a backpack. It doesn't have a lot of versatility, you know, and it, it really falls short when you're trying to do up close work. It's, uh, you know, the risk of you injuring yourself with something like this is pretty high, All right? So this is not the tool. This is not it, although very cool. Um, the next thing, 
a variant of that, I suppose. So here we've got, you know, a pretty good ax for, for cutting down trees. This is a three and a half pound head. I think it's a Michigan head style. Right? All my axes are basically that same style head, the Michigan style. Uh, not too wide at the end. You know, the wider the thing is, uh, the less advantage you get when you're trying to bite into wood, you know, in terms of this, this length here, right? Now with an ax like this, 36 inch handle, I, I can cut down trees, you know, in a pretty impressive fashion. Um, and I've got this sledgehammer on this end, very useful to have a sledgehammer with you in the woods, right? So this is really handy in that sense. Um, but it really fails you when you're trying to do up close work. You can do it, but it's kind of kind of clumsy for doing more nimble type things, right? Kind of heavy to carry, uh, not ideally suited to, you, you can strap this to a backpack, but it's not ideally suited. You know, if I was going to a camp with a bunch of guys and other guys were bringing other kinds of axes, I might bring this along so we'd have a big one with us. Um, you know, if we were cutting a lot of wood, someone should just bring a big bow saw. <laughs> That's, you could just a thousand times easier to cut wood with bow saws. Um, but um, anyway, if I was gonna bring just an ax as my main you know, lumber gathering tool uh, going way back in the woods. I wouldn't bring this because it's only able to do one thing really well. It's really good for cutting down trees. It's, it's better than this double bitted ax because it's also a hammer or a sledgehammer, a maul, that sort of thing. It's also a bit safer because I can drive this into a stump and leave it like that. I can lean it against a tree and only one side is dangerous, right? Um, so this is a better tool than the, the huge double-bitted cool-looking axe. Not, not as cool looking, but it's a better tool to take with you into the woods. But it's too heavy and it's too long and it doesn't do enough different things to be that all-around tool you've got. Uh, so now we're getting to it. Uh, there's one more kind of axe here. And this is the, uh, another long handle. The axe that's got the, the pick on the other end. Uh, it is another cool kind of looking axe, but this really is not the axe you want to have in the woods unless you're planning to, you know, uh, build a garden or something like that. Well, you know, this is a good axe, I suppose, if you're fighting forest fires or something like that, <laughs> right? But this pick, really, for most of the things you need to do when you're doing bushcraft, you don't really need that. I mean, you can fashion a different kinds of digging. If you need to dig into the ground, if you need to, need to dig a hole, um, you know, if you're going in the woods for multiple days, uh, you're going to have a pot. You can use that like a, you know, you can use a pot for digging works great. And you can just fashion a digging stick. So you have a, a pointy stick you use to work, loosen the soil up, and then you've got a pot to dig up the soil and remove it. If you were going to dig a latrine or, you know, whatever you were going to do, dig some sort of pit for roasting a pig or <laughs> whatever you're into, right? Um, so this thing, way too much axe, you know, just not the, the versatile to, tool you want to have in the woods. So, we get to uh, this style of axe. I've got two. This is one I bought for like $12 a number of years ago. Um, it was just in a bin in a hardware store. I, I had to buy it, it was $12. I mean, it was $12. My wife was like, what are you doing? You got enough axes. That's $12, I just can't help my, it's like a moth to flame, right? Now this thing here, you know, coming right out of the box, it, it had a lousy edge, very lousy edge. Uh, but I took a file to it and improved the edge, and, and this is pretty good for cutting trees. But it's got an unbelievably fat handle. The handle where your hand goes is really fat, and you really can't pare it down because the you can see the way the, uh, the, the head accepts the wood. It has to be that big and fat. It's just got that kind of a head. And I honestly think this handle, or this uh, axe head, was made to be hung on an inferior wood. Like why would you need a, a wood that heavy? This is only a two and a half pound ax, maybe even two pounds, I'm not sure. I checked it out, it's about the same weight as this. It looks bigger, but it's the same weight. I weighed it. Okay, this is a two and a quarter pound head, but I mean, so much more uh, wood it's been made to accommodate for a handle. So it, it could be that this is a, and there are places in the world where you know, amazing woods aren't, aren't ubiquitous. And so they have to use things like birch, not as good as hickory, right? There's, you know, or ash, that sort of thing, really strong uh, handle wood. Uh, so I think this ax is made with a somewhat inferior, it's never broken, I've never had any problems, but it's this big fat handle. And, uh, you know, there's an advantage to having a handle that's a bit more narrow. 
your hands don't get as fatigued hanging onto a handle like that. Um, so this axe works, um, but if you're doing a lot of axe work, when you've got a fat, really large, by fat I mean just a pretty large diameter handle, um, you're especially, I mean I'm six foot four, I've got pretty big hands, and even for me I find this just not, you know, not, uh, not ideal. And sure, I could shave it down and work it down, but when I see that the head has been made for this thick wood, I'm inclined to think it needs to be thick, that maybe this wood isn't that great, right? And also, if I did break the handle, uh, this is a non-standard axe head. I would have to fashion an axe handle for this uh, to replace it. So there's that. So that leaves us with our two and a quarter pound, 28 inch uh, handle axe, okay? So this one here, I hold it like this. My hands just wrap around the end there at the knuckles and it's against my chest, okay? If I'm trying to fell a tree and my blows are landing on that tree about, you know, 12 inches, between 12 and 20 inches off the ground on the, on the base of the tree. If I miss that tree, it's, if I'm standing properly, the proper distance from the tree, this axe is not going to land in my foot or in my leg. Right? So at this length, this is a good tree felling axe. The head on this axe is heavy enough that I can bite into a tree and take it down. I'm going to do another video, hopefully today, where I take a tree down this and just show how effective it is for felling trees. Right? Sure, it's not, you know, you're not going to win any competitions. You know, something like this, uh, you know, can be better. But it's going to do it. It's going to do it very, it's, it's, it's going to do it in a way that doesn't exhaust you. And, you know, using something like this, you might blow your arms out because it doesn't quite have the weight. I think this one has that sweet spot, right, where it's relatively easy for me, energy-wise, to, to impart the... Uh, the velocity, the acceleration, I know they're not the same things, but basically to, to get that thing moving fast enough so that when it hits the tree, uh, I, can, I can use that weight properly to bite into the wood. It's a hammer, it's also a sledgehammer, it's got all that advantage. It's uh, narrow enough and nimble enough that I can hold it in my hands and use it to do some carving. It's not as nice as this, right? But it's much, much, like it's almost impossible. You could use this, but I, it's really clumsy. It's heavy. It's very heavy. Um, and you can make an argument for having a two pound head on something like this or a one and three quarter pound head. You know, um, you know, I'd have to use, I'd have to use each one of those for a season and, and do a comparison. But I know this weight's good because I, I have another axe, uh, you know, uh, that I've been using for years that fits that bill as well. So for me, that is why the 28 inch Two and one quarter pound head. Uh, I guess you'd call that a Michigan style head. I'm not an expert on these sort of things, but just that really basic axe shape. Nothing, nothing crazy, right? That is why um, I think, and not only that, but it fits on your backpack reasonably well. You, you know, it's not a huge, it's not unwieldy to have this in a backpack, a large backpack, or, or even, even one like this. You know, you wrap the head in something, you put it in the bottom, it only sticks out about six inches, you know. Totally no problem to bring that along in a backpack. But that's why I'm sold on this type of axe. If you're gonna go in the woods for multiple days, deep into the woods, you wanna have something with you, it's gonna be safe, it's gonna be effective, it's gonna allow you to do a range of things. This is the axe. You don't gotta spend a lot of money, right? <laughs> you just gotta make sure it's got a good edge and the handle's working the way you want it to work. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, click the bell if you wanna be notified when I make a new video. You can follow me on uh, Twitter or Facebook. Just look for Outdoors on the Cheap. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.